I mean, they did, there is a difference here between these, these red and the blue bars in, in both years, and it's a significant difference with it. Okay, so, good news. <clears throat> now, what I'm using, though, in this, that was just overall percentages, because I could, that was actually the, the most straightforward way to approach this. But now, to compare these student response system questions, I, because some questions, they would have come in and only 10% of the class got right the first time. And then another question, maybe 70% of the class got it right the first time. That's, I have to take that into account. So I used what was called normalized gains. And basically the normalized gain is basically just this pre versus post a percent divided by the maximum gain, where the maximum gain is 100 minus pre. So if they started with 10%, 10% knew it. Okay, that would be my pretest. So I would, my denominator here would be 90, 100 minus 10. And then if 25% ended up knowing it, my numerator here would be 25 minus 10, so it would be 15 over 90 to give me an estimate then of, that, of that gain. And that's what I was using. And I had normalized gains in both years of 1 point, 0.16 and 0.13. These are not large normalized gains. Okay, we're looking at usually something above 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to be something where you've really done something important. And so now I go, oh, rats. I stink. <coughs> so, <coughs> what do you think I found out? Do you think that I found that the student response system helped dispel the misconceptions? So you're pretty well split. I've convinced a few of you. A little bit, a little bit, small difference, but small difference that, that yes. Well, then the interesting thing is, is that you're all right. <coughs> the differences were not statistically significant, but they went in the right way. <laughs> okay. Um, the, in 2005, you can, the, the normalized gains for the two were not huge. And actually, 2006, there's a larger difference in using the, two, the student response systems. It, it's still not significant. The probability level is at 0.5. So, I mean, I'm not saying. But there's, I think there's something there. And I think the problem is probably not with the system. The problem's with me and how I'm doing it and how I'm using it and, and part of how much time I think it takes with it. Well, here's one. Now, so we don't have a significant difference using the student response systems in the discussion questions, but there, there's indication there's hope for it. So what about the factual misconceptions versus the um, con conceptual questions? Do you think that it was easier to actually dispel the the the, uh, the conceptual misconceptions. <clears throat> okay. Well, y sort of. The factual questions had much higher gains. In fact, the factual questions had gains that were in this, what we start consider as being important, as where we're making some significant differences in normalized gains. The conceptual quest questions were ones that were still very, very difficult to get them to change their minds with. Um, <coughs> there was, uh, however, even though there's, the, look at these big differences on the chart, it's another one of these cases where they're sti it's still not statistically significant. Part of that's due to sample size, and part of it's due to the, the variability in the data that we've got. But, it was, but you start seeing that uh, it's, at least it's consistent with what the, the literature tells us, which what you, should be happening. Um, and I, just, I think that these, these types of uh, concepts are very difficult to change. So here's my conclusions. Overall, there's no statistical difference. However, the student response systems are very good at, one, identifying those misconceptions. I know if the students got them or not.
And before I was using that, I didn't know until afterwards what I had been doing. <clears throat> it allows the students to confront those misconceptions, especially if I tell them what's the right answer. At least at some point, they've realized that that's that what the, the way they're thinking isn't working. They might go back to it, but it's still thinking. Um, by itself, it doesn't cause them to rebuild their knowledge, their framework. It does seem to work better with the vernacular and fact, factual type of misconceptions. <coughs> and you, we get feedback here on whether the students really are learning things. All, a lot of these ideas, they're, they're happening. And students remain engaged. I, th the neatest thing happened when I started using the student response systems. I, Earth, Earth Science, I usually teach on a Tuesday, Thursday schedule for an hour and 15 minutes. Long time to pay attention. I started using the student response systems, and I'd look at the clock, and it's 10.15. Well, class, it's about, you know, make sure that you've got this ready for Thursday, you know, and let's go on. And, and they start looking around going, what? Class is over with already? That, to me, was amazing. And, of course, then when you ask the students to do a survey in them, that they were responding with it. But... <coughs> I think Woolsey's right here. You've got to be careful what you put into your head because it doesn't come out very easily.